Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha. And today I'm having uh, fat-free Greek yogurt, walnuts, and milled flax seeds. Alright, let's talk about floor press. I've had a lot of people ask me this. Um, they'll say stuff like, Jason, I'm stronger on the floor press than the bench press. What's my weak link? And the funny thing is that this doesn't tell us anything because the floor press is a different range of motion than the bench. And I'm not saying with certain little lifters, we can't watch their bench press and their floor press and tell what's wrong. And I'm not saying there's not going to be a ratio because I get asked that a lot too. What's a normal ratio? Well, the problem is that the normal ratio is so big that it's not going to be helpful for you as a person if I were to give it to you. And I base this on the fact that I have run dozens of lifters on conjugate who max on bench press, max on different bench grips on bench, max on floor press. And what I can tell you is the range is big. Therefore, it's not going to, it's not going to help you personally to know it. I mean, I could tell people the range, and then I'm going to explain why it's different for different people. That range, in some cases, I have found there are guys who can floor press 5 to 10 pounds more than they bench. Okay? That's one extreme. I also have lifters 30 pounds the other direction. What do I mean? I mean, if they can floor press 300, they can bench 330. Okay. 30 pounds stronger on the bench. You say, well, that doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. Because the floor press is a fixed range of motion based upon your arms. Okay. When your tricep touches the floor, that's the bottom. The barbell is when it touches your chest. So why does that matter? Because a person with a really big chest, right, the range of motion is shorter on the bench. Or it's longer, right? Well, it is shorter than that. But relative to the floor press, it's going to be different. So if we're bench pressing and we're stopped by the floor, our chest size doesn't determine our range of motion. So if you have someone who has a thinner chest, thinner back, it's going to happen. The floor press is going to be a shorter range of motion than their bench. A lot of these people, they go to floor press and the bar, especially skinny guys with long arms, the bar could be five, six, in extreme cases, eight inches off their chest. They're just doing a partial. Okay. This is how far away it is from their chest. And when you put them on a the bench, they've got to go five, six, eight inches deeper with more mechanical tension being placed on the pecs. Okay. See where we're going here? So what does this tell us about weak links for them? This person is going to floor press a lot more than they bench. They're going to floor press a lot more. And their pecs are probably not going to become an issue. And their front delts are never going to, aren't needed as much, right? It removes some of the emphasis on the front delt. Tricep becomes dominant and then pec second. So if they bench a lot, um, if they bench more a person in that situation, their triceps are a weak link. Triceps are a weak link for them. But then you have other you have people like me. If I create any arch, I can almost touch on a floor press. I have long arms, but look at me front to back, the thickness there. When I'm on the floor, the bar almost reaches my chest. 
for two reasons. Not just my ch chest would normally be closer, but my back is really thick. So when I get on the floor, it brings my torso up closer to the bar. Okay. So if you have a thick back, a really thick back, the floor press is actually a deeper stretch. If you add meat to your back, you will increase the effective range of motion of the floor press in terms of your joint angles. You're going to have to go to a deeper angle because you have all that back under you bringing your, your shoulders right, and all your bones closer up to the bar. And then also your chest is closer, which would be the one that changes the range of motion on the bench. A lot of my thicker guys, and myself included, we bench a little bit more than we floor press. Right? And a really good bencher with super strong delts, it could be up to 10% more. That's an extreme end. But because we have leg drive on the bench, okay? If we have good leg drive, if you have really strong front delts that really pop you out of the bottom of the bench, at the very bottom stretch, and you have good leg drive and good bench technique, you're gonna bench more than you floor press. All right? Floor press, you can't use your technique, you can't get as tight. That's one reason we use the floor press, All right? Removes a lot of your technique. Can't use your bench technique that helps you be a good bencher. You can't use it. You have to muscle it up. Be a good way to test certain things. It's also a good exercise for building because the pecs have to do all the work coming out of the bottom. It's actually a good pec builder. For skinnier guys, it's a good tricep builder. All right. Now. Now that you know these factors though, if those factors all stay the same, your level of thickness stays pretty consistent, your bench technique stays consistent, you will know the difference between your floor press and your bench press. And this is useful for conjugate for some of my guys who we need to hit a bench PR. And they know every time they've benched, it's been five pounds more than what their max floor press is. So that when they benched 315, they had hit a 310 floor press not long ago. All right, it's always five pounds better. We can then use the floor press to know what they can bench. Whether it's for a meet coming up, whether it's if we're gonna test their bench, they can walk in already knowing they're gonna get a bench PR. Because that's part of conjugate. A lot of times we want to program lifters to walk in and know they're going to PR ahead of time. All right? well, if they're always five pounds stronger on the bench and they've hit a floor press PR, they're now psychologically in their head, they know they're going to hit a bench PR, so they'll just walk in and do it. So it's useful to know this, the difference between the two for you as a person running the conjugate method. All right? It's helpful there. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.